This is the uh, football show. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by one of football's n- nice guys, a legend uh, in the game. The former Arsenal uh, vice chairman David Dean joins us in the studio. Now. Wonderful, wonderful to see you. And um, y- you've got a new book out. It's called Calling the Shots. Um, it's about your time, but it's about much, much more than that as well. T- tell us. It is. It is actually my life story, Calling the Shots, which is actually being released today. So you can buy one, although I've just given you one. <laughs> uh, for friends. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's the whole story of my life, my early life, my upbringing, going through to my business life, obviously my Arsenal life, forming the Premier League, World Cup bid, and much more. And then what happens afterwards, and including what I'm doing now with my twinning project, which is twinning football clubs with prisons, Mm. it's um, it's been eventful. I know that project's very close to your heart, isn't it? Yes, it it is. Tell us a little about that. Uh, Well, I started it about four or five years ago, and it was really spawned from the fact that I was on a charity circuit called Speakers for Schools, going around state schools talking. And after doing about 500 schools, I thought, where else is there a captive audience? And the word captive stuck in my mind. So I decided to give talks in prisons. And now I've been to every single prison in England, 113, and I realized there was very little rehabilitation being done. I thought, what is football doing in prisons? Very little. So I decided to form the project, Twinning Project, which twins a football club with its local prison, giving the opportunity to get offenders into football coaching, maybe groundsmen, to do something in, in the world of football and hopefully get a job at the end of it to reduce reoffending and save lives. And we've now got 73 football clubs twinned with a local prison. Yeah, amazing. So the book covers the whole span of my life. And of course, the Premier League forming the Premier League, and Sky paid a very big part in that, as mm. you know, only too well. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember it all. I remember, obviously, uh, you in, in Arsenal and, and bringing in Arsene Wenger and, and yes. uh, that first game away at Borussia Mönchengladbach when he was fog delayed us at Luton trying to get yeah, out yeah. there and all those days. What was the highlight, the, 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 the one thing of your time at Arsenal that really sticks in your mind? I don't now? think there's one thing. There were so many, Rob, and particularly when we think of the early days and winning at Anfield in 89, which was so, well, it was really unexpected. And that was remarkable. That was the high. And then when we talk about Arsene bringing in Arsene and his first double in 98 when he was unknown. And I remember somebody said to me afterwards, well, how did you know Arsene was going to be right for the club? And I said, uh, well, when he won the double in his first full season, that was a fairly good clue. And then, of yeah. course, running through to the Invincibles, so, and then getting to a Champions League, the disappointment actually of not winning the Champions League final. Yeah. And then what happened afterwards, really? It's been, it's been very eventful. You're saying um, the Invincibles, obviously, people stick in their minds because it was such an amazing achievement. You, me- you mentioned 98 as well. It was the, the FA Cup away at Port Vale yeah. nearly went out very early That's stages. Right. You've got a good memory. He's, uh, I, I can remember being there, yeah. Um, and, and all the way through to the final um, as well. Those were two pivotal, huge moments. Which for you was a, was a better achievement? This, the Invincibles, because of, of that feat? Yes, probably. And in fact, talking about the Invincibles, we actually launched the book officially on Monday night at the Cambridge Theatre, which was full. It sold out 1,200 seats for that. And we had seven of the Invincibles there in the evening. And that just shows them. Now it's 18 years later, and they all came really, I guess, because they all feel the bonding there between for Ar- between Arsenal and Arsene and myself and themselves was so close. Mm. We, were, it, we were family. Yeah, and it, it's 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 easy to forget now that, in some ways, you and, uh, and Arsene Wenger and Arsenal revolutionised football in, in the way players sort of looked after themselves and 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 the attitude, and then you had the move out of Highbury to the new stadium and then sadly for you you, you left Arsenal what, what was the was that the low point of, oh, of it all very much so yeah and what happened afterwards in fact the chapter I called life after death what happened after that and um, yeah that was that was really a low for me you, you can rem- it's listed in there the date the time yeah exactly the minute yes, that it happened you got it. 
18th of April 2007, 5pm. Mm. Did it come as a shock? It did. It's all documented. Yeah. You'll have to read the book, Rob. Yeah, well, uh, it's also documented that you tried to make a phone call and couldn't. That's true as well. Yeah, yeah because they and cut your phone off but straight you know away. You can take the boy out of Brooklyn, but you can't take Brooklyn out of the boy. Mm. You still follow Arsenal? Yes, I go every, Eat. every time, yeah. every time I can, and also to some of the away games. And of course, I spend a lot of my days these days going around schools and prisons, still giving what I like to think of motivational talks. And of course, going, giving talks, you know, for the FA and the Premier League, which I love to promote because the Premier League is so much part, you know, when we started it. Mm. And I can remember your old boss, Sam Chisholm, who was Rupert Murdoch's right-hand man, coming to see me one day when we, he wanted a pitch for the rights. And he said, uh, I'm going to teach your granny how to watch footy on telly, on telly. So I said, uh, really, Sam? I said, that's a clever trick. I said, she's been dead for 30 years. <laughs> and, and, that, that would have been an achievement. And, and, but nevertheless, he did. He, he did a really good job, and Sky had been... They gave it tender loving care, which I, I mentioned. Yeah, and it, it, it was a, a, a time of change. There's been a time of change at Arsenal as well. Mikel Arteta in now. Do you see parallels? Do you see a, a, a rebirth of the club now that perhaps when Arsene Wenger came in, the, 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 there was a sort of fundamental seed change in Arsenal at that moment, wasn't there? It had it, it gone from the George Graham, Bruce Rioch era, Stuart Houston, and then into Arsene Wenger. And do you see it now coming perhaps back alive again? I, I'd like to think so. And certainly there are positive signs of a renaissance that were going in the right direction. They've had a great start to the season. Long may it continue. S stop the race. Mm, yeah. They're, they're doing really well. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I always felt that it was a great shame that Arsene was not kept in some form within the club because he was so, so knowledgeable and so intelligent. You know, to harness a brain like his, uh, uh, it was a pity that, that he, he, you know, so he wasn't good enough for Arsenal, but he was good enough to be head of global football development for the world, looking after 211 countries. And I think that was, uh, I'd have liked to have seen him some, somewhere still kept within the club. Yeah. You um, still keep in contact with him? Oh, yes. Of course, he was on a Monday night. We were together. Mm -hmm. We were seeing him at the weekend. He's in London. He lives now in Zurich, of course, with FIFA. But uh, he, he thinks him. Arsenal could be title contenders yeah. this season. Do you agree with him? I think they've got a, they've got a chance. Uh, we have to be optimistic. Yeah. But it was that close relationship you had with him. Yeah. Wasn't it? it was almost hand in glove, wasn't it? You, you knew your part and didn't step in, in on his toes, and he knew his part and, and, and worked with you. There is a he? very special bonding to this day between us. I know when we were going in the negotiations, I could tell by his body language whether I should put my foot on the accelerator or on the brake. He only had to raise his eyebrows or sit forward or sit back. And, you know, we could read each other. It mm. was uh, pure chemistry. It was wonderful. And it, and it didn't feel like working either. I mean, it was fun. And of course, he lived opposite me, so I used to pop by his house virtually every night, coming from the office, coming from Highbury. I'd pop, pop in and we'd shoot the breeze about what was going on at the train ground. Did he make a good cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was great. I think it, it was good for the club because we had that ongoing conversation. I'm not so sure it was good for his marriage because I, I was there virtually every night of the week. <laughs> Um, you, you, you made some wonderful signings in, 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 during your, your time there and, and when Arsene Wenger came in he took that on didn't he and I remember that Blackburn away yes. that first game that tweet with Vieira in midfield yeah. and, the, and, and, and what that did was there a signing that the two of you really wanted but never got who would that have been well, you'll know who this is straight away, yes. Uh, this is when I was asked by our chief scout if I would go with him to see a, a young boy playing for Portugal uh, under 18, and he was only 16. And you can imagine who that young mm. guy was. So it was Cristiano Ronaldo. And um, the following day, Manchester United came and blew us out of the water. Mm. So these things happen. But, you know, it's all in there in the book. And there, there's one thing I bought with me, by the way, a little prop I have to show you this, Rob, because it's quite, quite funny. 
So when we were building, we had to build when after the Hillsborough, we had the Lord Justice Taylor report. So we had to convert our stadium to all seater, mm -hmm. and we had the North Bank. So I was talking to the architects, and I said, "Look, um, you know, this thing that always bothers me is there's never enough toilet space for people at half time. What's the normal?" He said, "Well, the normal rate is about 60 or 70 men for one urinal, and mm -hmm. about 30 for women." And I said, well, um, I want half of that. I want, to, I want to double it to make sure that we can make sure people can get in easier. So he said, it will take up a lot of space. I said, I don't care, let's do it. Rolling the film forward about six months afterwards, uh, the architect said to me, we're up for an award, our company. Would you mind coming to the award event? I said, certainly. And then the next thing is the MC says, when, and the best toilets in football go to Arsenal Football Club, and I got this award. <laughs> you were flush with success, yes, weren't I you? I believe it, yes. <laughs> but I didn't get bogged down. Uh, so, no. But you have to listen to this. Wait a minute. That's... So this, this is one... One of the more unusual trophies we won at Arsenal. Yeah, one, one, of, the, <laughs> one of the times you weren't panned by the critics. Um, anyway, um, I, I want to take you back to, to 2007 because a, a bad back f for the Queen led to yeah. something extraordinary, didn't it? Um, your trip to, to, to Buckingham Palace. Palace. In two, yes, in 2007. Tell us about that. It was quite remarkable and it was, it was just an honour to be there and to meet Her Majesty. And uh, the whole squad went. And uh, yes, I remember it well. And, it, and of course there's a protocol there that you're told beforehand that you do not initiate conversation. You must let Her Majesty speak to you. And my wife who was with me said, uh, do you think you can ask her what face cream she uses because she's got such perfect skin? I, I didn't get the chance, but you see, she was perfect outside as well as in. Yeah, there, there were some great stories coming out of that day. Abue um, making the Queen laugh by asking if he quit football, um, could, it, could he look after her corgis? Um, but did you get the impression, uh, that one thing that, that, that intrigued, was Her Majesty actually an Arsenal fan? Do you know? No, I don't. I can tell that Prince William supports Aston Villa because fortune when I... He was on the bid when we were doing our World Cup bid for 2018, and um, yeah, and he's well. Of course, he's president of the like president of the Football Association. Yeah, because um, it's, it's wonderful to see these pictures. Did did you get a sense at, at, at the time that she was a football fan, though? Well, no, I, I I didn't know that. But all I know is a real honour to go to the palace. And in fact, in my book, there is a picture of me sh of shaking hands, and I've got a caption which says, "If my mum could only see me now." Oh, that's lovely. Um, Arsene Wenger recently said that it'd be a problem for him, or it'd be difficult for him to go to to Arsenal now to sort of watch games and, yeah. and, and you, well, as a regular visitor yourself, do you think that would be the I, case? I, I can understand, he is bruised, the way it, it finished for him, the way it ended, it didn't end well, it didn't end well for me either, and it took me some time for me to go back to the club, that wasn't easy, and I felt, you know, it was my club from, from when I was 10, from my first game, and uh, so I can understand how he feels, and also I think he doesn't want to put any pressure on any of the the incumbents, the people are there at the moment. I think he would just feel perhaps he should be, you know, just remembered for what he achieved. Yeah. But I... But you, you, you have been a football administrator now on the global stage and the world stage as well, and so your, your opinion is, is of, of highly significant. I, I, I was interested, Chelsea chairman Todd Burley recently suggesting this uh, North v South Premier League game. Good idea, do you think? No. Um, uh, it, it's got to be meaningful fixtures. And I can imagine, you know, in America, it's the land of uh, great promotion. When you think of the biggest brands in the world with Apple, with Amazon, with Coca-Cola, you know, it's all about branding and image and everything else. We don't have time in the calendar for that. Uh, and, and I've always pioneered right from the onset that the Premier League should go down to 18 clubs to give a little space to get a proper mid-season break mm. and to give the opportunity for players to recover after a long, hard season. You know, 
FIFA are now talking about a two or perhaps a three-year World Cup going in. They're talking about a club World Cup coming in. So every fixture must be meaningful. And I, I, I'm not, I don't believe that is. Yeah. So calling the shots is out. Can you call the future? What next for David Dean? Uh, I've got to keep on um, pushing the steam down the pipes, I hope, and that w wanting to develop football, as Arsene Wenger said, what he wants to do at FIFA, that he wants to have more youngsters playing, boys and girls playing the game, and more and better coaches. I want to see football in a healthy position, obviously, because I regard the Premier League as my baby. I want to see it healthy. I always call it the fastest train on the track. We've got to make sure that is still the case and always will be. So, I, and I'll keep doing the work I'm doing in schools and prisons, which I enjoy. Mm. And seeing a lot of football matches around the world. Yeah, magnificent. Long may it continue. Calling the shots how to win in football and life uh, is, is out now. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you in here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Robert. Lovely to see you again. We do go back a long way. So <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, you've aged far better than me. Uh, lovely to see you, David. Thanks.